I just got the new 15 inch M2 MacBook Air and I thought I would show you how I set it up for software development. If you're like me who's OCD about extracting every bit of productivity out of my day, then you'd probably find a lot of these apps very useful as well. In this video, I'll show you all the apps I install divided in four different categories that are mostly relevant to software engineers. System, which contains apps that help me modify certain system behaviors. Tools, which has apps that facilitate the information that I need to do my work properly. Productivity, which includes apps that allow me to do my work more effectively. And software engineering, which obviously has apps that are geared towards coding related activities. With that said, let's get started. Hi folks, my name is Utsav. I'm a software engineer based in Seattle and I have over 20 years of experience in the industry. If you're new to this channel, my goal here is to help you get the best out of your career by mentoring you around five key pillars of career development. Technical skills, engineering efficiency, mindset, entrepreneurship, and financial freedom. So if that sounds interesting, please consider subscribing and follow me at Utsavize for behind the scenes and monthly Q&As. Okay, so let's first talk about modifying some system behaviors. The first app I install here is Alfred. Alfred is an award-winning app which boosts your efficiency with hotkeys, keywords, text, expansion, and more. It replaces the default spotlight and allows you to search your Mac and the web or specific websites like Google, Bing, Amazon, YouTube, and in general, enables you to be more productive with custom actions to control your Mac. The next app I install is Bartender, which basically superpowers your menu bar giving you total control over your menu bar items, what's displayed, when it's displayed with menu bar items only showing when you need them to. This is especially important for smaller screens like the ones laptops generally have because it helps declutter the menu. Once Bartender is installed, I basically tuck away all my menu icons that I don't need. Magnet is a simple window manager for Mac. If there's one thing that annoys me about Mac OS, it's the inability to arrange windows effectively. Magnet allows you to manage windows either by dragging them to specific corner or even better using custom keyboard shortcuts. This helps me multitask more effectively as having information shared between multiple windows is a pretty common scenario for me. The next app I install is Amphetamine. Mac OS does this thing sometimes where it puts the system to sleep even if some important background processes are running. For example, when a video is being rendered or a system extension is running through a neural model. Uh, in those cases, I want to prevent the OS from sleeping so that the machine has access to all the necessary CPU and GPU cores. Amphetamine helps with just that. It's a keep awake app that has flexible configuration options. Okay, so the second category involves gathering or sharing information easily. So the first app I install in this category is iStat Menus, which is one of the most powerful system monitoring app for macOS that exists right in the menu bar. iStat Menus provides a huge range of stats, including GPU, CPU, memory, network, disk, along with date and time customizations and calendar integrations. Next app is CleanShot X. If you work as a software engineer, you will be taking and sharing screenshots quite frequently, whether that's a bit of code, error, or some design elements. The problem is that the built-in screenshot feature sucks. CleanShot X is the solution to that. It's like the ultimate screen capturing tool, allowing you to make quick edits, like adding pointers, highlights, framing, and backgrounds, on the fly just as you take the screenshot. Speaking of sharing, obviously as a software engineer, I also share a lot of code, documentation, and text in general. And sometimes, in fact, most of the times, I don't want to copy over the formatting. I just want the raw text. The default text editor isn't good for that, so I installed Notepad for Mac. It's super simple, and what it needs to do is equally simple. I copy the text, paste it in Notepad, which will then make it lose all the formatting information. Then I copy it again and paste it over or share it to whoever I want. And that's basically it. Okay, so the next category is productivity. This is pretty self-explanatory, so let's look at some of the apps. The first app I install here is Notion, which is basically my second brain, where I store everything from my thoughts, book notes, ideas, and learning materials. But more importantly, they recently launched their projects feature, which has been phenomenally useful in helping me manage my side projects and even YouTube videos, where I track all my tasks, deliverables, and dependencies. I made a detailed video about this, and I'll link it in the description below 
below. Feel free to check it out if you're interested. AccuFlow is my time management app. It helps me consolidate all my tasks and calendar events in one place and block time for everything I need to do in a day. AccuFlow were also kind enough to sponsor this video. The best thing about AccuFlow is that it can act as a universal task inbox by seamlessly integrating with many other apps like Gmail, Slack, Todoist, Notion, Asana, Trello, ClickUp, and a ton more via Zapier or IFTTT. This allows you to continue using whatever applications you use in your day-to-day -day lives, but still be able to time block using AccuFlow. Let me show you a very cool personal use case that will illustrate how flexible and powerful AccuFlow is. So as I mentioned earlier, I use Notion as my information repository. And then there is this other app called Shortform that I use to quickly get book summaries of books that I'm interested in reading. So let's say I found this book called A Mind for Numbers Interesting and I want to read it. All I have to do is highlight a snippet from that book. And since my Shortform account is integrated with Notion, that detail will now automatically show up in Notion's reading list. Okay, so the reading list is created, but I will still need to schedule some time to read the book. This is where AccuFlow comes into play. Since my reading list is also integrated with AccuFlow, that book will automatically show up on my task inbox ready for scheduling. Then all I have to do is put it in my calendar to block time to read the book. Let's say September 4th at 9 a.m. But this sync is also bi-directional. So if you look back at Notion, it now reflects the date and time I actually set on AccuFlow. Not only that, since AccuFlow is also integrated to my calendar, that event neatly shows up there as well. This is just one use case, obviously, but I have a full video on how to effectively hack your calendar to become super productive where I demonstrate many more use cases of AccuFlow. If you're interested in that, I will leave a link in the description below along with the link to AccuFlow's website for you to try it out. Thanks to AccuFlow for sponsoring this video. And finally, Rise helps me track my time and gives me intelligent insights into how I spend my day. It learns my work habits and schedule and helps me improve my focus by suggesting timely breaks as well as providing tips and suggestions to maximize my productivity. It also provides various background music like lo-fi to keep me focused and engaged. If you want to use Rise as a session timer, then it's totally free. If you want more advanced feature, it costs a few dollars a month but I'll leave a link in the description below that will give you 25% off if you do want to try it out. All right, let's move on to some software engineering apps. I use Visual Studio Code as my default code editor. Depending on what stack you work on, yours may be completely different, so I won't go into too much detail about how I customize my VS Code instance, but if you are interested in that, I have a full video showing the settings I change and the extensions I install, so feel free to check it out. I'll leave a link in the description below. My terminal of choice is iTerm2. I use it with ZSH, and I like that it allows me to add some neat extensions like autocomplete but it is mostly a visual upgrade for me uh, from the default terminal. Again, not going to go too much detail here since you may prefer a different terminal, but if you are interested, I will link a video where I guide you through the whole process of customizing iTerm2 in the description below. This next app helps me create architecture diagrams, or well, diagrams for anything really. It's called draw.io and it is a super flexible diagramming app. It has all the official icons from various platforms like Azure, AWS, Google Cloud, or any computing feature or area. It also integrates with Google Drive, SharePoint, OneDrive, Git, Dropbox, as well as Notion. Or you can just export the diagram as an image and use it however you like. Best of all, it's free. This one is not strictly a coding app. Uh, in fact, it's a note-taking app for the iPad. It's called Notability, but where draw.io is super useful in making official diagrams that can be put in dev specs and presentations, Notability lets me scribble them as ideas. Once I have concrete diagram in Notability, I take that and convert it to an official uh, diagram in draw.io. A lot of you have asked me where I draw all these distributed systems diagrams and system design diagrams, well, that's all notability. The next app I find myself using often is Postman. If you work with the web APIs, this is a no brainer. It allows me to have different collections of APIs and various variable sets so that I can quickly switch between testing multiple microservices. Remote desktop is also a critical part of my app collection. A lot of my apps rely on Kubernetes clusters, which are set up with Docker on remote cloud VMs. So to manage or update them, I need to remote into those machines. Also, being a software engineer, I work with both Mac and Windows. So when I need to use Windows, I use remote desktop to hop into it. I didn't go into details about what specific languages or frameworks I install because that's largely dependent on what you work on. But if you are interested in it regardless, 
things like homebrew, MBM, etc. Feel free to check out this video where I walk you through my entire dev environment setup. Also, if you're curious about what extensions and settings I update and add for my VS Code, check this other video. For everything else, I've left links in the description below. So if anything piqued your interest, feel free to check it out. Please like this video if you found it useful and consider subscribing to the channel for more. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.